and um, there was introduction, so I'll, I'll have to cut it short a little bit. So I just want to present the current state of the things, uh, why I'm from Android, so why Android cares about it and kind of um, understand how we can move forward. So um, how it got into Android is because a number of actually multiple OEMs and SOC vendors uh, noticed improvements in ap application launch times um, on their workloads. And application launch time is a very important metric for Android, obviously. Uh, probably much more important than for like server workloads or any other workload. Uh, so <clears throat> multiple vendors asked us to uh, include that into Android common kernel. And we also t did our tests and found out that it's beneficial uh, for some of the applications, especially multi-threaded ones. Uh, so I looked uh, closer into why Android benefits from this, and the reason is um, uh, when Android um, spawns a new thread, that thread maps a number of VMAs, not a big number, but if you have a, num a big number of threads and even three or four VMAs in each thread, and some of the threads start page faulting right away, you will get uh, a map lock contention because when you when those VMAs are created by one thread, um, it takes write lock, and uh, the page faults take read lock, so they will contend and uh, step on each other's feet. So, um, um, as you know, uh, Michelle uh, posted recently, the, well, recently, several months ago. Uh, a patch set, the latest version of SPF, and uh, Mel Gorman um, tested, uh, ran his tests and benchmarks, um, uh, posted the results. Looks like um, the only benchmark which highly benefits from this, this is uh, page fault uh, P PFT test uh, in the multi threaded configuration. Um, there is also, I think, a small regression on Hackbench up to 4%. Um, so, and I think the main pushback was basically outside of Android, we don't see other beneficiaries of this, and it's quite complicated, so there's a maintenance cost. Uh, I tried to also run some additional benchmarks without uh, much luck to show the perf uh, performance improvements. Um, and because most of the, those benchmarks don't test this particular case, when I created a spe specific benchmark to test it, it shows like 84% improvements, but one can argue that this is kind of artificial test to show how this use case is handled by SPF because SPF was created for this use case. Um, so uh, why we don't see more reports from the fields like outside of Android that, oh, somebody tested it and it showed benef benefits, I think there, are, there could be several reasons. One is as SPF has now been merged upstream, so it limits its visibility. Many people just don't know that it exists. Um, another thing is um, some people might not care about start time of the application, so that's set up when you allocate a number of VMAs and you're also page faulting. Um, like for servers, it's probably very small um, amount of time versus the whole execution time of the workload. So they might not look into optimizing this kind of minuscule part of the, of the whole uh, execution time. And the third reason might be that the people who really cared about it, they probably worked around it. And a couple of workarounds could be like, instead of um, mapping multiple VMAs, one can map one big VMA and then uh, supply um, multiple threads from that big VMA part by part. Another uh, workaround might be like instead of spawning threads, spawn a process. For example, uh, web browsers. Um, today, if you open a web browser and ask it to restore your uh, tabs, it will create a number of tabs, whatever you had before, and it will start um, filling them with co page content that is page faults, basically. So technically, that would be a perfect showcase for SPF um, to show the benefits. But because each tab is basically spawned as a separate 
process with its own MM and its own MMAP lock, we don't see those benefits. Um, of course, I'm not saying that the design was done spe specifically for this problem. It's probably for security reasons, but uh, this is kind of a secondary benefit that you get. You don't get the MMAP semaphore contention. Um, so, so basically right now we are, um, in Android, we are um, merging this out of three patch set, which is quite sizable. It's actually the biggest out of three patch set in MM in Android today. And we are very interested in eliminating that debt. We uh, approach any out of three patch as a technical debt that we want to eliminate. Um, so basically right now, I am, we want to understand how do we move forward. Uh, does SPF have, have a future? Do we go with a different approach? Do we just patch it in the user space? Um, just like I said, we can figure out some workarounds, but obviously this is not, this is a kernel issue which should be fixed rather than we should be pushing it to, to the user space to figure out the workarounds for it. So that's, I guess, where we are right now. I wanted to say uh, I've seen um, in several applications, I've seen a lot of people hitting MMAP lock issues, and they always find a workaround. Like, they always find a way to deal with it in user space. That doesn't mean the issues are not there. It just means, you know, the, the people, they, 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 write their, they write their stuff, and then at the end, when they think it should work, they, 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 they spend an extra month finding, you know, some weird performance issue and having some weird things that, that in the deployment to make it work. If it's there, they, they say they're going to M local and it makes it work. Somewhere else, if they do M, M local, it makes it not work. They, they have a different workaround. They, they always find a way. So it's not like, it's not like the, the situation's impossible for people to deal with. It's just always a extra frustration that people have to deal with and that the kernel should not really impose on them. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like we do have solutions that, that work you know, better than uh, what's there. I, I just wish we could go forward with pushing it because, I don't know, it's there. It's there, people already use it in Android. I think a lot of um, concern people have was that it was too much of an edge case that wouldn't have enough support. I don't think that's really true. We know Android cares, they already use it. Uh, in Maple Tree, the fact that you know that you can have a lockless lookup is kind of a fundamental part of the design, and I think you have that set of developer that's also proved to care. You know, we may disagree on the details, but I think the idea that we want to do uh, lockless faults, I think, is fairly common right now, and uh, I just want to find a way to move forward with it. And hopefully it will not take us another 10 years to, <laughs> to get to the implementation. <laughs> yeah, it will probably take some time, but the primary question is, uh, are there any workloads that benefit from SPF and they wouldn't benefit from the maple tree and whatever kind of solution on top of that uh, would be a problem for those? Because I don't know whether we want to have both, because both are really large, and uh, in a, uh, so, from the maintenance point of view, a huge burden. So uh, do we want to have SPF just to rip it out as soon as uh, maple tree is merged, or? So I don't, see it as a conflict. I don't see it as a conflict in that way. So yes, you can have maple tree with the current uh, MMAP lock uh, locking. You're not really getting some of the benefits of maple tree that they want to have a lockless lookup if you do it that way. Um, so if you look at it that way, then maple tree is really just a more efficient arbitrary, but um, so I don't see it as a conflict. I think if you look both at what uh, uh, Matthew's looking and what I'm looking, it's very similar steps that have to be done in the page world. Um, 
I, I don't think we should look, look at them uh, as one or the other. Uh, one question is, uh, we were talking earlier about delaying some of the lockless pieces out of maple tree, uh, possibly for some time. Uh, having SPF in addition would allow you to get at least some of those benefits earlier rather than later. Uh, it, it's not a free ticket, sure it's not, but you know, it's, uh, it is a ticket. <laughs> I think there's also some things that you only discover while trying to, 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 to do the patch. For example, one that we found was the conflict with, well, the, that we had to deal with uh, MMU notifiers, and even if there's no notifier, you have to take some sort of log to know that there won't be one being installed while you do your lockless page vault. Um, it's a lot of details like that that have to be dealt with. Really, they will be the same whether we do SPF or we do it the maple tree way. It's really the, the, the set of issues that has to be looked at is pretty much the same. Like We can argue about details of how we're going to implement it, but it's really the same basic issues that have to be solved either way. And um, just to note that SPF has been backported for a number of years, starting when Peter Z came up with his original implementation. Android uh, vendors, independently from each other, started backporting it and seeing the benefits. Um, so it's it's pretty, pretty widely tested on a lot of devices. Um, even the latest version already started being tested by a number of uh, vendors. So from that point of view, it's um, at least it's not like a very fresh thing. We have tested this for, for a number of years or on a very large number of devices. Um, on, well, on mostly on ARM, but also on X86 uh, emulators. Another point I want to make is that the previous iteration of SPF, uh, if you did PFT on a multi-socket platform, uh, you would hit the, the, the performance issues that, that, that were with uh, SRCU. So in the previous iteration, if you did PFT micro benchmarks, you would see a regression. While uh, the way I do it, you actually see a pretty significant impo improvement on multi-platform, on multi-socket platforms. Uh, because you remove the, you don't have any a share line, shared cache line contention. That, that, that's honestly, I think, talking about the micro benchmark optimizations like PFT is not that interesting a workload to me. Uh, but that was, you know, one thing that people were concerned about previously. That's really uh, the opposite now. So with, with the Android builds, though, you do use uh, CLang, so the VMAs are a bit different. Um, you, you have a guard VMA or something, so the, it's a bit of a different workload than what we would experience in Linux externally, right? Yeah, true. I mean, there could be some uh, differences. Um, if I'm not too confused, the PowerPC testing is GCC, right? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's another point that um, yeah, we, we do test a num number of configurations on number of architectures, well, number of architectures, x86 and ARM uh, with different co compilers. So that I'm not saying it's as tested as our mainline configuration, but there is some tests that, that are run in those configurations as well. So do you see a difference between using the different compilers with your, your guard VMAs at all? or mm, We haven't tried probably running performance tests because um, those additional tests that we run is mostly for, for to make sure that it's stable. Um, yeah, and running performance tests on an emulator is kind of an iffy proposition 
to yeah. start with. Um, yeah, we, we don't do the performance tests on, as far as I know, we don't run performance tests on other architectures or with other configurations with other compilers. Uh, but we do run the stability tests for those. I was just wondering if the, the guard VMA is affected at all, that's all. Well, I can, yeah, I can check for sure and come back with that, with the answer. Uh, so, uh, the tests in Android, I presume it's pretty much the same pattern. You start up Dalvik and start running the Android applications, right? So, mm -hmm. how, how does it compare to, say, server workload? Uh, uh, and uh, from, from the stability perspective, right? Uh, the changes in the virtual memory layout, the advices here and there, so. When we how 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 Dalvik uh, how how is Dalvik representative of uh, more or less a generic case? So if I understand correctly, you want uh, to understand how Dalvik compares with like a Java standard uh, environment or there, there has been some testing by Laurent Dufour, uh, who you may know, um, using uh, a certain large commercial database on a PowerPC platform, very large PowerPC platform. Okay, so that would be an example of the other, right? My question was more like, how much Dalvik st Android stability is representative of a more general case? Oh. Huh. So you said it pretty, pretty much tested, but you test more or less a single use case, right? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I'm not saying that, you know, we have bulletproof solution here. I'm just saying that this is a solution which has been tested on number of devices, in number of configurations, and sure, it's not upstream. Until, until it's upstream, you can't say it's tested, right? So when it's upstream, we will find out all the issues that, hopefully we'll find out all the issues that come out. But that's, that's a chicken and egg problem. You won't get the trade testing until you get at least into some stable trees, and you, got, <laughs> you won't get into some stable trees until you get reviewers and acts. So, um, yeah. Well, any more questions? I guess we five, five minutes earlier. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>